Today we explore Magnum P.I., the 2018 reboot of the iconic 1980s detective series set in Hawaii and starring Jay Hernandez as the titular character Thomas Magnum, a private investigator solving crimes with his pals. We're discussing Season 5, Episode 9, Out of Sight, Out of Mind, which came out April 16th on NBC. Welcome to today's episode. You know how this works. We start off with a game. I'm trying to trip you up with a little trivia about Magnum P.I. Apparently, there have been a lot of crossovers in the Magnum P.I. universe, both the new show and the old show. And I want to see if you can guess which is true and which is false. I have. I For some reason, I feel like I'm going to be good at this. Yes, but... I think you will be. But let's see if I can trip you up. So the show that Magnum P.I. had a crossover with, Quantum Leap, Season 1, Episode 10, called Island Time, May 19th, 1980. A year after Magnum P.I. officially ended, Selleck reprised his character in a Quantum Leap episode where scientist Sam Beckett leaps into the body of a man falsely accused of murder, only to team up with Magnum in an attempt to clear his name. So now, these, are these, though, these are the old shows, right? <laughs> uh, this one was for the old show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I want to just say that the date that I said at the end was the Quantum Leap date that um, every every episode that they did had a date at the end. That right, he jumped I remember. To. Yeah. So it's not that it was actually from 1980. Obviously, okay. yeah. So yeah. So again, Magnum P.I. ended and he showed up in an episode of Quantum Leap. Um, true or false? Oh, okay. Just true or false. Uh, I'm going to go with true. Okay. Uh, the next one is... Wait, you're not going to tell me? <laughs> yeah, I'll wait until the end. All right. The next one is also from the old show. It combined with Murder, She Wrote, Season 3, Episode 8, Magnum on Ice. In this episode, Magnum travels to New York to return a manuscript to Jessica Fletcher, played by Angela Lansbury, and ends up helping her solve a murder. I mean, I was like up for it until you said Magnum on Ice, because that just sounds so ridiculous. I'm going to go with false. Okay. All right. And the next one is from the new show. All right. The one that came out in 2018 that we're talking about today. It combined with Hawaii Five-0 in an episode called Desperate Measures. When a murder happens on Magnum and Higgins Watch, the team from Hawaii Five-0 gets involved recovering a secret list of CIA double agents, which then leads to a search and rescue mission. I know that Hawaii Five-0 ended, I think, a couple months into COVID. And if this, if Magnum PI is in season five, that means 2018 was when it Tw came out? Uh, it so... came out season season two, episode 12. So I think it came out in 2019. Okay. And, and Hawaii Five-0 crossover with it um I, i'll go with yeah i'll go with true on you'll that. say true on that one all right and then the last one is the show was macgyver season four episode 11 called sticky situation macgyver played by lucas hill receives a distress call from his old friend magnum who needs help to solve a baffling prison break as they investigate the scene macgyver and higgins realize that the missing per prisoners have escaped using a super sticky adhesive as they climbed out of the wall climbed over the wall during wreck time. Again, the name of the episode was Sticky Situation. Uh, I mean, that just sounds so ridiculous, but I, I, even though I think it's false, I'm going to guess true. And one thing I'm realizing about all your true and false is that uh, with Magnum PI, all the shows that you're saying they crossed over with either were like MacGyver and Hawaii Five-0 were like remade later on, or yeah. were the remakes. Mm -hmm. Except yeah. for Murder, She Wrote. Yeah, except for Murder, She As of okay. yet, it has not been remade. But uh, you actually got three out of four of them cr incorrect. Incorrect. Okay, Incorrect. So karma. the Quantum Leap one is false, right? Mm -hmm. But the murder she wrote one is true. That one and happened. Then, yeah. Magnum on Ice is true. It was a two-part episode. Most of these other ones were two-part episodes. The Magnum PI that you got correct was the combination with them in Hawaii Five-0. Okay. Same yeah. show creator, Peter M. Lenkov, developed MacGyver, Hawaii Five-0, and the Magnum PI reboot. That makes okay. That makes a lot. He more also sense. got canned for being abusive and toxic really recently. Oh, okay. Like over so, the last couple of years. So did he like direct this episode, or like did he have anything to do with this episode? The episode that we're doing? No, he was yeah. canned like three years. Oh, ago. okay, okay. So I'm talking about like recently. Like, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, and then also, interestingly enough, the person who created Quantum Leap also created Magnum PI. You remember him, Donald P. Belisario. Yeah, right, Yeah, because right. you did the research on that episode. He also invented NCIS and then sued when they started making sequels to, I think, NCIS Vegas. And so he wanted to... Well, they made a that. ton of sequels to NCIS, But I think right? he was part of... He got, like, a cut of most of them, but mm -hmm. not with Vegas. Um, and it's also confirmed that Magnum P.I. actually is in the same universe as JAG, 
First Monday, NCIS, NCIS Los Angeles Scorpion, Hawaii Five O MacGyver, NCIS New Orleans, and NCIS Hawaii, Wait, which so just came all out this of those, year. All of the shows you just mentioned? Same universe. Same universe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they wanted to make some <laughs> movies, they could jump into that at any well, time. Well, it makes a lot more sense with the crossovers as of now. Yeah, so a lot of people, when this first got rebooted, were saying, well, you can't reboot it without Tom Selleck, and he's busy, busy with Blue Bloods, right? And his mustache. So they recast someone completely different who doesn't have a mustache, they kept the fact that he was like a Navy SEAL, but I think uh, Selleck started when he was 35 years old, and Jay Hernandez, even though he looks young or looked younger at the time, was started at 40. It's worth mentioning I never actually saw any of the old Magnum PI episodes. Mm-hmm. So this was kind of my first introductory to it. Do you want another interesting fact about the old one? Sure. Apparently, it was supposed to be like he was supposed to be a James Bondish type character, but then Tom Selleck was like, "No, I want this to be an everyman." So he he intentionally <laughs> made the character a little stupider and. And, and just like flawed than he would have been otherwise. Yeah, I mean, this show, it, it was very strange because it had a lot more characters than I thought it was going to. It focused on a lot more storylines and it actually has like an ongoing storyline. Of course, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which Isn't I think he dating, Magnum's dating with Higgins, right? Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of a side storyline, but I mean, like there's like investigations that they're going through throughout this season that like you, you have had no idea watch. about. Yeah, that, and I thought that this was just an episode where you could kind of pop in and just understand what was going on pretty quickly, but it's like no there's there's some details here and there where i feel like you kind of do have to watch some of the other episodes particularly around the buck green storyline someone that got murdered but the summary i have for this show is mercs who killed buck green are trying to kill thomas as well as other members of the team that was kind of shown i guess in the previously this week julia and thomas investigate otis a man at a psych ward who was found dead but there's more to his death rick chills with his friend tc on a boat Gordon, uh, a dad, a Korean dad, and his son, Dennis, check out colleges as Childs digs deeper in his Lewis Peel case. It's interesting that you refer to them all by their first name, because I don't know anybody who says instead of Magnum says Thomas, but I guess maybe in the show they yeah, do that. The, yeah, Got it. because like it starts off with Julia and Thomas. They're on a date, and it, like one of the first things we hear is Julia saying Thomas, and uh, and Thomas like pulls out a ring. Yeah. And I was like, is this the episode to watch to like get me introduced? because it feels like some big stuff was happening yeah, like he's we're, getting married we're to the starting star. off with a proposal uh-huh. already uh and do you know if like julian and thomas are like a will they won't they thing? because it seems like they must have been for the first couple seasons yeah i don't think they started off together yeah so thomas pulls out a ring he opens the box and suddenly there's a instead of a ring a bullet inside mm-hmm. and then thomas chest starts to bleed and i was like okay right away this is a dream sequence yeah. like and i was so it didn't trick you like endeavor tricked you when no you, when you saw the make out <laughs> scene there and you were like this is for real he's no. getting the girl he's because, stealing her at the altar <laughs> because then juliet starts looking at her hands and they're starting to bleed uh, and i was like okay so she's gonna wake up in her bed this is the part where it did trick me though suddenly she wakes up and she's strapped to a strapped to like a, a really raggedy she bed to? she's inside <laughs> okay. a hospital and she literally has her arms trapped there are random needles and injection shots all around her and she seems very confused and that suddenly made me go what the fuck <laughs> because the intro starts playing and i was like what is exactly going on here so i guess the beginning did kind of grab me even though i saw where it was going until the very end Mm -hmm. that was only like two minutes or so and then that's when we wait so you don't start off with a case you start off with one of the main characters in the hospital yeah well yeah basically strapped to a bed and then 36 hours earlier that's what Mm -hmm. we get in text so Mm -hmm. obviously it's going to show us how we got into that situation uh and this was just kind of stuff that i learned from the very beginning lewis peel lewis peel it's a witness in in child's investigations child is a character i should probably say by the way yeah um he somehow ended up with cracked ribs in a hospital and thomas used him as bait i guess in an earlier episode to lure out a man who killed buck green i did some just These quick days. research on yeah. buck green apparently he was in it for like six episodes i think this season before getting killed somehow um magnum tells him that they got someone else that they can maybe charge with that could help in uh, in child's investigation someone named oliver kane whatever that means i was a little confused and then meanwhile that's when we uh, again get the case of the week juliet meets with a woman uh josie who found otis which was her boyfriend uh in a garage with the car running he was an orderly uh working at a psych ward and there was no note and it wasn't very much like him and I so so they're private investigators and this josie goes to them and says okay my boyfriend has some trouble or something right no, well she was she, the boyfriend's already dead by okay this point. He, he's completely dead but you she wants them to solve 
solve his murder. Because yeah, it was it was cops... at least it looked like a suicide, but she thinks that's something more because she's like this just wasn't very much like him. He was always nice and he was always chipper. It doesn't really make much sense why he would commit suicide. Understood. Yeah. <laughs> then we get like the quickest scene ever. I, this again must be an ongoing story because it was only one scene. Rick chills with his friend TC on a boat. Yeah. And I feel like this was only here for one reason at the very end to introduce TC because something happens to him at the very end of the episode. But TC's TC's the main character. Yeah, and he's, he's so, barely in it. But he said a, introduce, so like, okay. Well, I meant introduce TC in the episode. Understood. I know that he's a main character, but he only shows up here for like two minutes and then at the very end for like one minute. And then, uh, and then again, kind of finishing out the 10 minute mark, we get Gordy and his son Dennis. They're checking out colleges. They're apparently leaving Hawaii. Gordy is kind of trying to drop hints to Dennis, not so subtly that he wants him to stay in Hawaii and maybe do like something there because he wants to be close to his son but Gordy is talking about how he wants to kind of uh, see what his options are sure he wants to leave Hawaii yeah but do you remember what my biggest problem was when we did the Endeavor season nine and I talked about the first episode a lot? Uh, no, what? It's the fact that whenever you have these type of storylines, a lot of it is just characters talking to different types of witnesses. Yeah. In fact, there's even a huge montage in this episode where Juliet decides to talk with a ton of people from the psych ward. Mm -hmm. And it's always just ends up being the person who has like the least to do or the person she least interviewed. Yeah. So I could tell who like the who the murderer was of Otis pretty soon after they introduced them. So it's predictable. Them. Yeah. That's a big knock. Yeah. If you're five seasons in and you're still predictable, like, mm. Well, and it also, Maybe it's some, <laughs> some storylines, some storylines were just very odd because it's like, I get that you want to have the Gordy and Dennis storyline where they're checking out colleges, but it really doesn't come into play, I felt like, in this storyline. All that ends up happening with that is that they go to a restaurant, some person is kind of racist to them because they're Korean, and then, like, the dad and In him, Hawaii? Yeah, uh, well, no, again, they've left Hawaii okay. to go check out one of the colleges. I thought you meant, okay, no, no, I followed. Yeah, and, and then, like, and then Gordy is basically like, I'm sorry that I've been dropping so many hints about you staying in Hawaii, you can do whatever you wanted to. Child's case, now that I see how great it is outside of <laughs> Child's case is also kind of weird, because it doesn't seem like his storyline does much, yeah, like, if this is the storyline they're going with for him for the whole season, yeah. I feel like it's going at a snail's pace, this Luis Peel case, because all he did this episode, even though it seemed like he was going to be a big part of the episode they almost start off with him he's in the very first few scenes he just interviews someone who like had a rental property or at least sells rental properties and some of the people who apparently killed buck green or something to do with his murder decided to to like uh, buy some space from him yeah so it's like these storylines they don't actually i feel like interconnect at all it feels it feels pretty muddled but the way that you're describing it like maybe you should start with just the focus on the main storyline the, story the, the, the weak storyline and then you can take a guess as to what is the uh, long-term like arc that they're sure, going Sure, yeah. I mean, uh, so Juliet, she's interviewing a lot of people at the psych ward. She's ended up taking this Dr. Rachel Kesey's identity because apparently that was someone who was going to start working. A P.I. stealing identity. Yeah. I read about this. They, like security firms, they like to break into hospitals so and this is like, an show the weakness. Thing. Well, no, not P.I.s usually, but like actual hospitals hire out security firms to come in there and try to break in and then see what they can take. Because the way that they did it here, I'm glad you say that it's an actual thing because the way they did here was super easy for them. Apparently, all Juliet had to do was like email the doctor Rachel Kesey, the actual person who's the doctor at the hospital because she hasn't worked yet, and say that the, her like appointment date or her first day was just going to be delayed. Mm -hmm. So then she was able to dress up like Doctor Rachel Kesey. It almost reminded me of Mission Impossible in that way, sure. and go in and look. I, I, some of the interviews are actually entertaining. Like when she's interviewing the psych ward people, they all have their own type of things. And one oh, of of them, yeah, one of them thinks that, like, uh, Otis was working for the Illuminati or something like that. We get a person named Steven. He doesn't talk at all. He just seems like he's almost dead inside. There's nothing about him. And then you get one person who, because they've watched so much House, can tell that actually Juliet isn't Dr. Rachel Kesey because apparently the way that Hugh Laurie says his, like, ERs or something like that, it's it's so obvious and she's doing the same oh, type of British. thing. Yes. No, so, I so that was actually entertaining 
to watch. That's something different that I don't see in a lot of these like procedures. So the writing shows. had a little bit of uh, something special. In yeah, it. I mean, uh, I mean, it's predictable, but there's a little special. Uh, yeah, and so we then learned that really the person who had something to do with Otis's death was this nurse that we saw early on in the episode. Apparently, the doctor that she's been working for really wanted Otis like dead, and they've been medicating this Stephen guy, the guy who seemed like he was dead inside, mm-hmm. uh, like way too much sure, over for money. For, for whatever reason, it was kind of a little murky as to why they did that. So the nurse ends up knocking out Juliet. And then this was the strangest part. At the very end of the episode, we didn't get any narration throughout the whole thing. But suddenly Thomas just starts Who's, speaking sounds like he's barely to in the it. audience. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like he was kind of doing his own thing this episode, but really was not that important. Yeah. But he, yeah, he just started suddenly narration came out of nowhere and then he's suddenly going to where Juliet is. He was able to find out where her phone was because her phone was still on. That was a question that other people had. <laughs> and yeah, and he starts like he runs in, is able to save the day because the nurse was about to knock out or really kill Juliet yeah. because apparently Overdose her or something. Yeah, yeah, but it basically served the same fate that Otis served. And while this is going on, Juliet is kind of like stuck in her own mind. She's mm-hmm. even having an interview with her doctor Rachel Kesey self. Oh, it's like the Harley Quinn thing where yeah. she talks to herself. Yeah, because she's also like stuck in a white room and trying to get out of the door. It was just very odd. Anyways, it was seems... it good though. Like, were you enjoying it? Or... I mean, it just. Uh, what it, would you it, give the episode? It went off the rails, and yeah. I'll get I'll, I'll give my rating in a second. Sure. But actually, my rating kind of changed after this because we had seven minutes left. It seemed like the bad guys were kind of put away. It seemed like the episode was going to end, and I was like, you know what? This just seems like a five. The last ten minutes just seemed like they went so crazy. I really wasn't understanding the college storyline because it was barely in the episodes child's case also it didn't seem like a lot was going on the acting was fine there were some interesting writing quirks like with the interrogation scene but i was like you know what this is probably not going to pass and then the final five minutes of we got this a florida, episode florida happens man situation because it just like i said final 10 minutes crazy it decided to embrace this craziness with open arms so one of the reasons why Childs was interviewing this person who was uh, showing these properties or like kind of giving out these real properties to people, the real estate agent, exactly. He goes to one of these real estate places that he thinks he's going to be able to find uh, information on the Louis Peel people or the people who killed Buck Green. Uh-huh. And he decides to walk right inside and he's going around the house. He's searching around with a flashlight. He's even finding pictures of him and uh, and Thomas talking that day something that we saw at the beginning of the episode someone's been following them and taking pictures of the pis like you hire a private investigator to uh, (laughs) to follow a private investigator so so then childs pulls out his phone whips it out he starts calling thomas it's like look they have information on us because he's like leaving a message he's like we have to be very aware of these people he steps on a trip wire and the house explodes. Yeah. Now this was a complete shock to me because I thought that Childs at least was in he's the, the show. He's the one person who keeps saying that he's not even on the main cast. Okay. So I was just like, what? <laughs> I thought because of the way they were treating his character and as if this was like a big, like kind of his story arc this season, I thought he was a main character. Mm-hmm. But instead he's just dead and it happened out of nowhere. And I was like, wait, what? But that's not even the best part. The very end of this show, and this is why I say they just kind of interviewed TC, I think, for this part, this final part. He's closing up shop at wherever he works at. I'm not really sure. They were, like, looking at a helicopter. It was weird. But he's closing up shop, and then he gets a ding on his phone, mm-hmm. and he opens up the phone. He gets a notification, yeah. Yeah, it's a notification. It's basically movement. It's like a ring doorbell. Oh, okay. You're able to tell there's cameras set up all over the place. Uh-huh. He pulls out his phone, and he sees that right behind him, on, and he's watching it on his iPhone, which is what makes it so hilarious, is a masked gunman with a gun. Yeah. And so then, suddenly, he's standing right next to a desk. He whips open a drawer that has a gun in it, <laughs> nowhere, yeah, his own gun. pulls out the gun, turns over, is not able to get a shot off, and is shot twice in the chest. Oh, no. Of course, making him collapse and fall over, and the gun is just out of reach. We see so many shots of him trying to get in this final he's minute. He's clawing for that gun. And I was thinking to myself, okay, we're going to end with like a bang or something but no instead the gunman comes right up to him has him in his sights and the episode ends (laughs) because we don't even get a gunshot you're gonna watch the next episode (laughs) 
<laughs> no, but I was saying like no? what f- from the craziness that was it happening. It amped up. It sounds like it, it, it amped up so much. I mean, the Otis storyline I could kind of follow, but these final five minutes, they just decided, I guess, to throw the whole entire kitchen sink in, and it makes me want to give this rating almost a point higher, and therefore it passes a six out of ten. I'm going to give this show, Still but not I'm great. not going to be watching another episode of All it. Right. Well, you might have been along the same lines of CBS when they canceled this thing. In they fact, canceled CBS it. CBS canceled it, and then. NBC NBC picked it up. So NBC Wait. is what you watched it on. And it, and it also got renewed for two seasons as opposed to just okay, one. Okay, you know what? So that, it, I, I was going to say something because you were talking about Quantum Leap earlier. Yeah. And I was going to say how the Quantum Leap crossover couldn't happen nowadays because Quantum Leap is on NBC. And this, I thought, was still on CBS. But yeah. now that Quantum Leap is, that Quantum Leap crossover can happen. Well, well, the interesting thing is I was curious how many shows have gone directly from CBS to NBC. And... Almost all of them were from the extreme past. And I have a bunch of shows here. I'm just going to name them. One of them is fake. See if you can figure out which one it is. Okay. There's Search for Tomorrow. That was a soap opera. Came out in 1951. Ran for 35 years. The Arthur Murray Party, which came out in 1950. Uh, also ran for 10 years. Uh, Tank Wars, which came out in 1978. Had two seasons. Um, and then Bachelor Father, that came out in 1957. Uh, ran for five years bachelor bachelor father. father and then father knows best 1954 ran for six years all of those went from cbs to nbc at one point or another uh what was the first one that you said search for tomorrow was a soap opera okay second one okay the second one the arthur murray party which apparently was one big ad it was like just this guy named arthur murray who would do a big dance thing with a lot of uh hollywood elites and stuff you know what i'm just gonna go with the middle option because I, I really can't tell tank wars one. 1978 Tank-wars. yeah ran for two seasons yeah yeah that's it that was a fake one <laughs> the, the, i almost had it written down for it only ran for one season but then i was like the whole point of the game is cbs to nbc <laughs> so that would have given it away pretty quickly well all the shows that you mentioned at least for the first two were like went on for a long time it seemed like so should i said tank wars 40 seasons yeah well, <laughs> that might have that might have convinced me to pick something else uh jay hernandez um it's interesting because i would have known him from expanse uh, but if from the first season, he was the young detective that was working with Thomas Jane's Is character. Is he the one that... Uh, okay. The one that gets, like, shot. I was going to say, and yeah. Then, and then they, like, write him out. And I was thinking maybe it had to do with this, but he was also in Friday Night Lights. He was also in the Suicide Squad movie. Um, and then also, I think you would know Zachary Knighton from Happy Endings, Flash Forward. He's been around for a while. He played uh, Rick in the show. Yeah, I'm sure there's some people that I've seen in our things. The thing about this show is that it just seems so overly melodramatic at different points. Yeah. Because you get so much Any of Any more the... so than the NCISs of the world, though? Uh, you know, I think that this was better. I even have comparisons here. Better than, like, CSI East New York, for sure. Because there was no parts where I was like, oh, people might lose their job for this. Or at least kept the suspension of disbelief believe uh and also fbi even though i know i didn't watch that one Mm -hmm. but there was just so much schmaltzy stuff between juliet and thomas that i felt like you had to get through just to actually get to the meat of the storyline higgins in the original i think was a dude so like they yeah okay. they flipped that out first. yeah <laughs> I think I, I learned about that I remember that being something that I read like a also the Reddit community is in love with Tom Selleck when you go to the thing and I was like oh well they'll give me some facts about the 2018 series nope just a lot of pictures so of Tom Selleck is this gonna be really like Quantum Leap where they just could not get Scott Bakula back no matter what because here it seems like they're... Tom Selleck it doesn't seem like he wants to come back for this thing uh I I think he's just busy I I don't even know if they're like looking to combine the worlds because he's playing that character. Right. In the Quantum Leap one, he's not playing Scott Bakula's character. Maybe they need to do a Spider-Man No Way Home scenario. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anything else that you want to say about the show? No, I mean, that's that's kind of about it. All right. It got solid from the few reviews that are out there. It said it was a solid episode, and people seem to like it. Um, I feel like this is just kind of an average episode yeah. for those people. This is average definitely a show where if you kind of turn your brain off, I, I actually had to review it, so I couldn't do that. But if you turn your brain off, I'm sure it's enjoyable. It's mildly entertaining. There's nothing obscenely wrong with this. All right. Well, thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next episode. Hope you enjoyed this one. Bye. Bye. Bye.